Blue Jays postseason is already over. This one is lined fair down the left field line. It'll ricochet. They managed to get a couple of runners on in, fur in the first base or the first inning, but were unable to get them home. The Twins opened the scoring in the fourth after loading the bases. Don't swing at the one. And the Twins added a second run before the inning was over. The Jays did have nine hits, but nine hits are one thing, but if you can't get a run across the plate, does it really matter? Okay, so let's reflect on mm -hmm. yesterday's game and the season for the Jays. Adam Peddle and Nick Paleog. Paleog? Palaylog. Palaylog. I'm so sorry, Nick. Good try. Uh, just <laughs> yeah. Happens all the time. Palaylog. All right, let's play along here with the Blue Jays Today podcast. All right, um, Adam, I see you're wearing black. Are you in mourning today? What's, what's oh, the story? Oh, absolutely. I'm actually yeah. not even joking. I was telling oh, my no. girlfriend last night yeah. I could not sleep. Wow. I was overthinking, replaying the moments of last night. Um, yeah, I, I'll be honest, yeah. I should be going yeah. to a funeral. Today's oh, my the day. goodness. Yeah. Okay, and Nick, uh, you're looking a little somber, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> somber. Um, but when you were watching the game, at what point were you thinking, oh, no, this is not going well? When did you start losing hope? You, this is really, really very sad to say. Before the game started. Really? Uh, wow. and, and it's because the issues that we watched in game one uh -huh. were the problems that this Jays team have been dealing with the entire season long, right? Yeah. So you see it in game one, you're, you're praying, you're hoping that something will change. It didn't. And we both knew walking into game two what was going to happen and it played out exactly how we thought it would. Now, Nick, a lot of people are pointing to that decision to pull Barrios out mm -hmm. of the game in the fourth inning, despite the fact that he was really pitching well. Even Buck Martinez was calling it out on the broadcast. Mm -hmm. Is that the biggest issue you saw last night, or was it the base running? Where do you sort mm -hmm. of... It, it, it was a, you know, a multitude of errors. Uh, I would argue that I think that the manager, uh, John Schneider, probably needs a new set of glasses because clearly they were not working for him yesterday. <laughs> he did not see at all what Jose uh -huh. Burrios was doing. And that plan to take him out, that was something that, that yeah. was clearly decided before the game had even mm -hmm. started. They right. just said, regardless of what's yeah. going on, we are going to take him out. And I just, I think that that was a big, big mistake. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Like, like, look, anyone could do that job. If the analytics department are going to make that decision right. for the team, mm -hmm. and then, well, then what are you doing as a manager? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? you you got to be able to, again, like Nick said, use your eyes, see what's happening, and make an adjustment mid-game. All of that being said, though, you're never going to win the game if you score zero <laughs> yeah, runs. That's right. So that's regardless yeah. of who you're pitching, yeah. Yeah, uh, if, if you don't score at all, it's really not going to matter. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I, I tend to call uh, pitchers are like the goaltenders in, in hockey mm -hmm. in terms of how you can prevent scores, but you still need a score. That's and right. we didn't see a lot of offense yesterday. It's been really streaky. Uh, but let's talk about, like, the, the base running. Vladdy made a kind of a critical <laughs> error yeah, at, at second did. base. I mean, you're a professional baseball player, so, so what do you think was going through his mind in that moment. Look, I, he said it in a post game too. He, he didn't think that he, or there was even a chance for him to get picked off at second base. Look, I get it. You know, you're really focused on Bo Bichette. You know, he even looked over at him, you know, mm -hmm. saying, hey, slow down the moment, slow down the moment, which we had a chuckle, you know, during mm -hmm. our live stream last night. Because, right. hey, because after you got picked off, you don't focus on Bo Bichette. You got to focus on your job, yeah. which is you got to know where that shortstop is right behind you. Gr granted, Carlos Carrera, the shortstop of the Minnesota Twins, Gold Glover, really excellent player out there. Mm -hmm. But you still got to know where he is because your run matters. So what do you think, Nick, Adam, either one of you take this question. Is Schneider coming back? Is he going to be on the bench next year? We have very different opinions on well, this. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> I, I do think that, uh, that really any, anything is, is up in the air. Mm -hmm. This is the first off season that I think we're walking into as Toronto Blue Jays fans where I'm not necessarily excited at what's about to happen. There's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of changes that go on with this team Somebody is probably going to have to take the hit, potentially take the fall for what just transpired. I don't know if it's going to be Schneider. Right. I'm not sure who it's going to be front at this office. point. Potentially the front office. Yes. Someone, though, is going to need to, to take the blame for being 0-6 right now with the core of Vladimir yeah. Guerrero Jr. and Bo Bichette in the postseason. Right. Mm. And when you look at that 0-6 record, right, who's the people that have been around for that 0-6 record? Yeah. Who's the people that made this team who it is? You know, it's Ross Atkins, right? You know, so that is an easy scapegoat, right? It's not necessarily his fault. But who's going to take the fall? You had John Schneider sign an extension this offseason, mm -hmm. so you don't really want to fire him after you just do that. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. I mean, that's the thing. You're paying big bucks to guys to sort of perform in these clutch situations, and they quite candidly did not do it. Ross Atkins isn't at the plate. Mark Shapiro's not swinging the bat here. Mm -hmm. So do you think they need to change the structure of the team, or is it they were going up there with a different mentality based on analytics, perhaps, when they're taking mm -hmm. swings at pitches? It's, it's so funny because... 
they did. And, and the entire conversation last season was, well, the pitching and the defense, not good. That's the big problem. Yeah. And credit where credit is due. Ross Atkins and Mark Shapiro, in the entire offseason, they addressed that. Yep. And their plan, ultimately, it did work. The pitching was great. The defense was great. Yeah. I don't think anybody anticipated the offense to be the way that it was right. in this season. So I guess you, you, you try to go back in that direction, mm. but it's just tough to know the direction that you take right now if, if you are the yeah. front office for this team. Because you're already spending so much money on the team, right? Yeah. They're right around that like uh, that threshold of going mm. into the luxury mm -hmm. tax area. So mm -hmm. anybody else that you're bringing in, a, you kind of need a superstar. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're missing. They're, they're you know, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette, they're good players. Yeah. But they're not superstar carrying team players that we see around the league like, like Ronald Aaron Rodgers, maybe or like Aaron Rodgers, yeah. <laughs> like Aaron Rodgers. I'm exactly. a big Green Bay Packers fan. That's what oh, you say. Oh, yeah. sorry, not Aaron Rodgers. Uh, the other Judge, one, Judge. Judge. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> other New York guy. Yeah. But both, yes. Absolutely. Both yeah. really good. My bad. That's who I was referring right, right. to. But you know, I was at that game when they played against Tampa Bay and they scored 11. You know, thank goodness right. my son was there to witness it, too. So we know they have it in them. Yeah, and, and that's but. the thing. They're very streaky, like you said. It's inconsistency with runners in scoring position. There really is no, you know, no explanation. It's just they just can't do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a mentality thing. I don't know if it's a, you know, hitting coach strategy thing. Whatever it is, they're just not hitting the ball well enough to fall. And they look, they hit the ball, they hit the ball hard a lot mm -hmm. in that yeah. series just was not falling. I, I would say. also argue that there's been an inability to come up in clutch moments. And, and I, just to cycle back to that, Guerrero, and really put a pin in that, that whole base running mistake, it is one thing, and it's still a bad thing, to be picked off at second base in game 62 yeah. of the regular season on yeah. a Wednesday. Yeah. It is a completely different thing on a full count yeah. with yeah. your best hitter at the plate with mm -hmm. the best opportunity you've had in the whole game yeah. Yeah. to then get caught sleeping at second base. Yeah. Not a good luck. One run in 18 innings, that's not going to cut it. Listen, I hope the morning period, Nick and Adam, isn't too long for you. <laughs> of course, as they say, next season's just around the corner. Appreciate you being here this morning. Thanks, Thanks so much. much.